The other day I was looking for uh, some additional information before I provided an answer to one of my YouTube viewers. And I stumbled across this page here on the adobe.com help section uh, specific to Adobe Captivate. And I noticed that there was an entry here that provided some information about using JavaScript to play or pause a video. And I thought, hmm, I think I could make use of that. So what I've done is I've set up this sample project here with a demo video in the middle of it. And I've imported this using event video for a number of reasons. Event video, of course, uh, isn't synchronized to the rest of the course. And you can certainly give uh, controls to event video. Uh, I can add a, a variety of different skins to event video, uh, including skins that have scrub bars and so on. But maybe I want something simpler. Maybe I just simply want to play pause control and I want it to be separate from the event video. I've also chosen event video because regardless of the length of the slide, in the timing panel of an event video, you can check off pause slide till end of the video. And this is quite useful if you want the user to be able to play the video and then have it automatically go to the next slide once the video is complete. But in this case, I'm doing something a little bit different. So what I've done is I've added this little button here, and this is a multi-state object button. If I go into state view, you can see that there's an additional custom state that I've created for the pause state, which shows a play button instead of the pause. And that's going to be useful as I'm going to create a toggle to play and pause this video. So let's get started with that. So I've already ticked off use as a button. Um, I did get rid of my rollover effects because I thought they wouldn't be uh, necessarily useful for this particular instance. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the pause for this button. I don't need that. I, I want users to be able to click this uh, a number of different times. And of course, this slide won't continue to the next slide until the video is finished playing anyway. So let's go into our Actions tab. We're going to create an advanced action that is a combination of advanced actions, in this case a conditional action, and some JavaScript. So that's going to be kind of fun. So execute advanced actions. We're going to create that new advanced action. We're going to call this play pause video. And as I said, it's a conditional action. So we're going to check off the conditional tab. And the first thing we need is actually a variable that's going to keep track of the condition of whether the video is playing or not. So I'm going to go down to my variables button, which is located in the bottom right hand corner and we're going to create that new variable and we're going to follow convention here and go with v underscore and we're going to call this video paused or yeah paused and we'll give that an initial value of zero the default state for an event video is to start off playing so the default value of video paused should be zero as well. So we'll hit save and I'll close this here. And that's going to be the test condition for this particular advanced action, that variable we've just created. So I'm going to say if the variable V underscore video paused is equal to, and we'll go with the default value here of zero, then we're going to run the following command. Uh, in this case, we'll do this step by step. We'll deal with, first of all, the assigning of the variable to its new value, because that's something you're going to need to do. Uh, so we're going to assign v underscore video paused with the literal value one, because of course, if it's zero, we're gonna be pausing it. Similarly, we're gonna to want to include else statements. So if the default value or the starting value of video paused is one, what do you want to have happen? That's gonna be down in the else statements here. And it's essentially just gonna be the opposite of what's in the actions list here. So I'm gonna copy this one, place this down here, and we'll make a small change. We're essentially bringing it back to zero if that's the case. 
So now we've taken care of keeping track of the condition of the video. Next, we want to change the state of our button. So in this case here, we're going to change the state of, and I haven't labeled it yet, but it's the only smart shape on the slide, so I can assume that it's smart shape one. And we're going to change that to paused. Similarly, we're going to copy this, paste this down into the else statements, and just make the opposite true, normal. So now we're ready for some JavaScript. So we want to uh, use the paused command. And as I indicated, I found the JavaScript code for that right here in this uh, adobe.com help file. And we'll just copy that. I'll provide a link to this page uh, in the description of the video so you can see this for yourself. So one of the commands that's available in advanced actions is to execute JavaScript. And there's two things that you need to take care of. The script window where that set of commands or scripts needs to reside. And you need to select which window to run that in. So first we'll paste in our command to pause the video. Click on OK. And we're going to say current window because that's of course where this video will be running. Now we need our else statement, which is going to resume the playback. So we're going to grab this command here, copy that, and again, execute JavaScript, open the script window, paste that in there, and again, we'll choose the current window. Save this as an action, click OK, and now we can click close and we should be good to go. Incidentally, I forgot to do this, but a best practice is to label your smart shapes. It makes it a lot easier to write advanced actions or conditional actions if you know the names of all your different objects. So we're going to call this, we'll call it video play pause. Incidentally, if I put a space in the properties label of an object, it'll get replaced with underscores. So I think we're good to go here. Let's take a look at this. We'll preview this in an HTML5 browser. So as you can see, uh, with the play bar down here, of course, with, uh, with event video, the slide will pause at the end, waiting for the video to be complete. But our play pause button works perfectly. We can toggle between paused and play, which is perfect for users to have control of this event video. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.